Hi, everybody. Uh, welcome to week four. We're going to talk about alterations in the respiratory status and oxygenation. Um, we're going to start with general oxygenation alterations, asthma, and COPD. So alterations in oxygenation, and that's the first section you should be reading or should have read. Um, we'll start with hypoxemia. It refers to a decrease level of oxygen in the blood. If left untreated, hypoxemia can lead to hypoxia, which is a decrease in a delivery of oxygen to the body's tissues. Even mild impairments in oxygenation can cause symptoms like fatigue, irritability, and discomfort. Severe alterations in oxygenation can be life-threatening if not addressed promptly. Some types of alterations in oxygenation are uh, or can be categorized in wrap that. Okay, here we go. Uh, types of alterations in oxygenation. Um, alterations in oxygenation can be categorized based on gas exchange, patency of the airway, and respiratory patterns. Damage to thoracic structures or inflammatory, inflammation, excuse me, ah. damage to thoracic structures or inflammatory or inf inflammation of the respiratory mucosa can affect respiration. Um, dyspnea is a feeling of breathlessness and or, or difficulty in breathing. It can be accompanied by increased respiratory rate, tachypnea, sweating or diaphoresis, and audible labored breathing. Dyspnea can lead to anxiety and distress. A few common All right, let's go back a little bit. Various alterations in oxygenation include apnea, or absence of breathing, hypoxemia, which we talked about, decreased oxygen levels, orthopnea, difficulty breathing when laying down, or pneumothorax, uh, lung collapse due to the air in the pleural space, and tachypnea, a rapid breathing. Interventions for these alterations often involve identifying and treating the underlying cause and providing supplemental oxygen when necessary. Let's talk about gas exchange and acid-base balance. The body's respiratory drive is primarily stimulated by the concentration of hydrogen ions in arterial blood, or pH. An increase in blood hydrogen ions results in decreased blood pH, or acidosis, leading to increased ventilation. Conversely, an, a decrease in hydrogen ions results in increased blood pH, or alkalosis, leading to a decrease in ventilation. Impaired, impaired neural regulation and damaged alveoli can limit the respiratory system's ability to compensate for the pH imbalances. We already talked about hypoxemia. Now let's talk about cyanosis or bluish skin mucous membranes uh, discoloration. Um, that's a, those are signs of hypoxia. Cyanosis may manifest differently in individuals with varying skin tones, including including gray or gray-green discoloration. Then there's VQ mismatches. Abnormalities within the alveoli capillary system can cause ventilation perfusion mismatch, or VQ. <coughs> These mismatches can result from airflow blockages, lung collapse, blood clot formation, or other factors. VQ mismatches can lead to inadequate oxygenation of the body cells and may occur simultaneously. 
A few modifi modifiable risk factors include obesity, type 2 diabetes, smoking is a big one. Now, that's probably the biggest that should have been on top, and stress and anxiety. Some smoking sensation, cessation. Um, smoking causes more increased mucus production in the lungs, in the airways, reduced cilia action in airway passages, um, prolonged exposure to smoke can cause decline in pulmonary function. If the patient opts to continue smoking, respect the patient's right to choose. And nicotine replacement therapy like nicotine patches, we can offer that. All right, let's move on to asthma. <clears throat> So a brief pathoetiology on this one, and I won't read everything, but uh, basically asthma is a chronic inflammatory disorder of the airways characterized by bronchial hyperresponsiveness, and that's usually to some kind of triggers, um, can lead to bronchoconstriction, increased mucus production, and edema in the lungs, in the, the airways. Um, the causes could be allergens, either pollen, dust mites, or pet dander, irritants like smoke, strong odors, or air pollution, respiratory infections, that's a big possibility, extra exercise, emotional stress, and occupational exposures to chemicals. A few risk factors, um, family history of asthma, uh, personal history of allergies, exposure to smoke, obesity, and occupational exposures. Uh, clinical manifestations include wheezing, especially on expiration, breathing out, dyspnea, shortness of breath, uh, cough, chest tightness, and a few other things here. The nursing process. <clears throat> so we're gonna assess assess the patient's respiratory status, including breath sounds, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation, and the cough characteristics. Evaluate the patient's medical history and triggers. Um, assess the patient's knowledge of um, asthma. Uh, some nursing diagnosis could be ineffective airway clearance. That's a big one. Impaired gas exchange, anxiety, So planning, um, uh, the goal is to achieve uh, and maintain optimal asthma control, minimize symptoms, and um, basically enhance the quality of life for these patients. Uh, collaborate with the patient to develop an individual asthma plan and provide education on self-management techniques. Implementation. Now, there are short-acting bronchodilators for quick, quick relief um, or long-acting bronchodilators to maintain therapy. Um, teach the patient to use these medications appropriately. Educate on trigger avoidance. Uh, teach and reinforce breathing techniques like pursed lip breathing. And assist with development of asthma action plan so they can take it with them. Uh, provide education on recognizing the signs of exacerbations and seek medical attention and when to seek medical attention. Then we're going to evaluate the process, um, assess the patient's response to the medication therapy. If something's not working, we need to talk to the provider to uh, change things up, uh, monitor respiratory status, and assess if for improved uh, symptom control, evaluate uh, the patient's understanding. That's pretty much universal for all diseases. We wanna know how the patient understands things. <clears throat> um, for health promotion, we can educate the patient on triggers, promote influenza and pneumococcal vaccines and encourage regular exercise and maintain a healthy lifestyle, including not smoking. Um, 
here's a few medications, uh, short acting albuterol for a quick relief. It's like a rescue inhaler. Um, long acting bronchodilators uh, for maintaining therapy, um, corticosteroids uh, for anti-inflammatory control and um, Montelukast or Singular for long-term control and prevention of asthma symptoms. A few independent nursing interventions. We can teach and enforce proper inhaler techniques, um, assist with the uh, development of the action plan, educate on trigger identification and avoidance, uh, promote breathing exercises, and provide emotional support and reassurance. For pediatric patients, um, age-appropriate education is good, and that's with the parents and caregivers. Uh, geriatric patients may have a lot of comorbidities, and they require close monitoring sometimes of medication interactions. A few prevention and test strategies, uh, spirometry, it just assesses the lung function and helps diagnose asthma as well. Allergy tests, you want to see if you're allergic to something. And peak flow monitoring, which measures the maximum airflow during forced expiration. And that's asthma. Here is COPD. So let's breathe patho. Um, COPD stands for chronic obstructive pulmonary disease. Basically, it's a progressive, um, irreversible uh, respiratory condition, um, basically chronic airflow limitation. Uh, primary cause is cigarette smoking, uh, which leads to inflammation, inflammation and destruction of the airways and the, the lung tissue. Uh, etiology or the causes, like I said, smoking. Um, environmental exposures, secondhand smoke, occupational exposures like chemicals, and genetic factors. A few risk factors. Again, the same things that we mentioned, family history of COPD, age, most commonly diagnosed after 40. Uh, clinical manifestations include chronic cough, often with sputum production, shortness of breath, especially during exertion, wheezing, chest tightness, decreased exercise tolerance, and frequent west respiratory in infections, and barrel chest. In the barrel chest, you'll learn a little bit, or you have learned a little bit in the last term in lab. So the nursing process includes the assessment. Uh, again, just like asthma, assess the respiratory status, uh, breathing or breath sounds, respiratory rate, oxygen saturation. Evaluate the patient's medical history, <clears throat> including smoking history, occupational exposures. Um, assess the patient's knowledge of COPD. Uh, a few nursing diagnoses include ineffective airway clearance, impaired gas exchange, and anxiety. So basically the same as asthma. The goals or planning uh, to optimize respiratory function um, and enhance quality of life. <clears throat> Collaborate with the patient to develop individualized COPD plan and provide education on self-management. Implementation, administer prescribed medications like albuterol. Um, excuse me. And they're pretty close to the same as asthma. Educate the patient on proper inhaler techniques. Teach and reinforce breathing techniques like pursed lip breathing or diaphragmatic breathing. Encourage smoking cessation and provide whatever education you can on that assist with the development of a COPD plan, and provide education on recognizing early signs of exacerbations and seek and when to seek medical treatment. And then evaluation. 
uh, assess the patient's responses to medical therapy, and change it if you need to, monitor respiratory status, and assess for improved symptom control, and then evaluate the patient's understanding and adherence to the management strategies. <clears throat> Health promotion, educate patients on smoking cessation, promote influenza and pneumococcal vaccines, and like asthma, include or encourage regular exercise. Medications include short-acting bronchodilators like albuterol for quick relief, long-acting bronchodilators for maintaining therapy or maintenance therapy, and inhaled corticosteroids for anti-inflammatory control. Independent nursing diagnosis, what you could do as a nurse, uh, teach and reinforce proper inhaler techniques. Assist with development of COPD action plan, promote breathing exercises, and prom provide emotional support and counseling. Um, geriatric patients may have comorbidities and require closer monitoring. And pediatric patients are very rare in COPD cases. and prevention tests and therapies against basically the same thing except as uh, asthma, except uh, pulmonary rehabilitation. And this is where a multidisciplinary program that includes exercise, education, and support uh, to improve COBD management and quality of life.